pretty recognizable here in NYC for making great food. But the only way that happens is passion. You gotta have passion and you gotta have uh, care for what you're creating. It's really a lot of hard work. You know, everybody loves a story, man, like of somebody just coming up out of nowhere. And no restaurant experience. Doing food now. Go figure. <laughs> We've received in a short time span quite a few accolades. I'm not too crazy about accolades, to be honest with you. It's not something I focus on. I just focus on making good food and whatever comes with it, comes with it, and that's about it. But I was on national television on the Tamron Hall Show. We've done, obviously, our Vice segment. And when the Vice segment went live and it, was, it went on YouTube, we saw a tremendous amount of growth after that. You know, you can imagine the lines were just crazy. It was just sold out like in two hours. Eater has written about us as well. And there's probably a whole bunch of other articles I don't even know. Usually they get sent to me and that's how I find out. Yeah, so. I was coming up with the name for the, the business. I was like, man, Santana's Barbecue, Ruben's Barbecue. A family member told me like, hey, how about Bark Barbecue? I was like, Bark Barbecue. I was like, really? He was like, yeah, think about it. You know, bark from the tree, you know, bark on the meat. There you go, Bark Barbecue. And I was like, you know what? Bark Barbecue, let's go, let's go for it. Bark Barbecue is located in Time Out Market at 55 Water Street, Brooklyn. So it's right near that famous brick road under the Manhattan Bridge that everybody takes a wedding picture, prom picture, just about any picture. We've been there since November, so we're almost about to have a year. We're open seven days a week. <laughs> There's no chance for a reset. Seven days a week and 11 a.m. till we sell out. Wednesdays is usually a great day to pass by, but you wanna know things fluctuate every week. So like this Wednesday was crazy busy. You know, we're prepping sauces, we're prepping our broth that we do for our rice all our custard for our mac and cheese. I, that's the main thing with this barbecue stuff, man, it's prep. Prep is the most important thing. So a bark is different from a lot of barbecue joints because we're open seven days a week. First, we have the quality of being psychotic. <laughs> so if you don't have that quality, it's gonna be tough. Julio's been with me since Smorgasburg of last year. And he's the one that mans the ships over, over there. And it's, uh, he's a huge help. And then we have uh, Yanissa, she's our supervisor, works in the kitchen side of things to help with the recipes, making sure everything is consistent. And then we have Camila. Camila, she helps back of house and front of house as well. Samba, he's our lead cook, he's a machine. Yeah, and my man gets everything ready. I have one of the most amazing crews out here. We're a band of misfits, made up of different cultures, different personalities, and I don't think Bark as it is right now, it'd be what it is unless it had the crew that it has right now. I'm going to start the cornbread, okay? <laughs> when I started Bark, I didn't know like what was the reception gonna be of Texas barbecue. But to be honest, a lot of people are fans of Texas barbecue in New York. Like it says on the awning, it's a Dominican Texas style barbecue. You know, people are just like, what does that mean? And it's like exactly what it says. You know what it is, bro? Us Dominicans are really known for like seasoning everything. Oregano, chili powder, pepper flakes. Everything gets oregano except the sauces. So that's like a very Dominican thing, no, the oregano? That's so Dominican, okay. Bro. Oregano? Oregano is so big in DR. But I usually like using the whole ones and crushing them right when I'm about to use them. It's a little bit more fresher. But that's like our Lowry used to be ours. That and adobo, Sasso. Yeah, man. So I'm from Dominican descent. I was brought up mainly with my Dominican family. So we have a good mix of, you know, what you would usually find at a barbecue spot, which are brisket, pork ribs, pulled pork, and then you have our arroz maduros. Those are just things that when you go to a sweet 16 or a birthday party, you know, they had all the bandejas out on the table and you're just putting a little bit of everything. And and that's the beautiful thing, I think. Like, it just complements the meat and the meat complements everything else. All the pieces go well together and it creates this great flavor and experience when you go and eat at Bark. Oh, Papa. 
Oh. Oh, that's so good. Oh. When you're on the line and you come in order at the at the cutting station, you know, we're here, we're talking, oh, hey, what's up? You know, it's like, it's such like a, a chill vibe, you know? Like, we try not to take ourselves too serious uh, because we want you to have a great experience. In DR, no matter how difficult it is out there, how much hardship they have, one of the biggest things is like, everybody's gonna eat, everybody's gonna have a good time, and I drink their presidentes, and that's, I think, that's one of the biggest vibes that I wanted, you know, us to have at the restaurant. Our brisket, our brisket is uh, it's a Texas style brisket, but with Dominican flavors and seasonings. Then you have our pork ribs. Our pork ribs are also very different because they're not a very sweet flavor profile. It's more of a salty, savory type of profile, you know? And then you have our Dominican style pork belly, aka chicharrón. And also we have our chicken. It's, uh, it's smoked and then it's fried, so you have that crispy skin, and because it's smoked, it just has that soft, juicy interior. It's like, oh man, I just love our mac and cheese. And that thing gets all the bells and whistles and seasoning. You have our rice. We do a 24 hour bone broth with our bones that we trim off the bone-in bellies. Our cornbread, we have cinnamon, ani, so it's it's a it's a twist on it. And then you have our coleslaw, and we also have our platanos, which is my favorite side. Even just eating on a regular basis. You just want to chop it? Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I'll give you a little bit of onions and coleslaw on the side. Oh, the biggest thing that people don't know is the sold out model. And it's crazy. You know, people think like you have an infinite amount of meat and you can produce an infinite amount of meat, but it's really, really impossible. And we've tried, and trust me, we've upped the quantities, man, but we're still selling out. So it's, it's tough. I think that's the biggest, the biggest difficulty. I would have to say we're cooking about five days out of the week. I'm gonna start cooking our briskets, our pork butts, um, our big proteins, you could say. As simple as it may seem, man, like this part right here, knowing how much falls, very important. Cause also like when you over season, like that's when you have like the, the rub that it comes off. Like you'll just see like, it comes off like a little chip. I really like the flavor profile of our brisket. I feel like it's very distinct. And, you know, apart from, you know, really focusing on the cook, I feel the flavor separates it as well. I feel like it's different. We have uh, four pits right now, currently. And we have a 500 and three 1,000 gallons. We have our first 500 gallon. That's Big Red. The first 1,000 gallon is pink. And the third, and the fourth, we still didn't come up with a with a name, so they're like nameless right now. <laughs> so uh, now that you brought it up, I think they're feeling some type of way. <laughs> The burn-in, like the one that has the fat cap, you want it against the wall because that's where you're gonna have the most heat deflecting off of. So it kind of protects it on that side. This side is much cooler. It's not that we open it up a lot, but we do peek inside of there to see which ones have a lot of moisture on top of, and we have to transfer it over to make sure it dries out. And also all the small ones in the back, and then we increment the sizes when it gets closer to the firebox, you know? It's typical stuff. General barbecue, I always used to barbecue at home, just like anybody else. And, you know, I got my first uh, wood chip smoker. So at that time is when I worked on the craft. The first time I did brisket was horrendous. I'm gonna work on fire management, see how good I can get, and I'll try to conquer brisket again. So for July 4th of 2019, I would have to say, I did like a July 4th uh, party, backyard party. I invited, it was like 30 people that came over. And I did the brisket. I was more methodical in the way I did everything. Well, it started at precise time, had everything trimmed, seasoned and stuff like that. And when I sliced into that first brisket, I was like, oh yeah, this is it right here. Where'd you find that stump? Uh, he gives it to me. Okay. Because every so often, 
you know, the, we lack precision and we end up uh, chipping away at it. So you get that. We use White Oak. The supplier I have is one of the best. Harstel Greenhouses, he can get me the, like four or five cords just like that. Burns really good, neutral uh, flavored wood, so you can use it with any protein. It's just so well seasoned. Burns great. And I've had a lot of people who borrow wood from me. They're like, yo, this is the best wood I've ever used. So I know for a fact that they're giving me quality stuff. Briskets right now with the current briskets that we have, about 14 hour cook on a good day. Our ribs and our chicharron, chicharron, that's usually around the same time, six, seven hours. Um, so every day is a long day. Today is gonna be like, it's gonna be a small cook from chicharron. Today is gonna be like 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. So what's the regular cook then? 50, 52. Today is gonna be like the refill for the weekend. Pitmasters, we have Bolly. Bolly's from Puerto Rico. He actually moved here from Puerto Rico and he's been there since November. He's been a really reliable, hardworking guy and so friendly. Like, people love him at the restaurant because he's, he's just a character, man. I see what Ruben does in New York. I visited him and that day was like, uh, if we if we know each other for like 10 years, you know, here we are nine months later, puppy. <laughs> you see like a lot of salt, but really is why, why, why I tell you, you know, this is gonna be fall apart. It's just to dry the skin up. Yeah, chicharrón is definitely not a Texas item as we make it, but it is a protein very popular in Texas, which would be pork belly burn ends. Yeah, man, that chicharrón is just epic. This recipe of Ruben is fire, bro. It has a lot, a lot, a lot of spices. I work at the restaurant some days, Seeing the face of the people when they try the chicharrón and the and the ribs, that's awesome, bro. That's the real feeling. These are important, man. <laughs> what people be now and on right now. A little rib tips, a little cartilage on the bone. I'll make sure every crevice is well seasoned. Today is, uh, as crazy as it sounds, is not a big cook. Just, it's a very hot day, so we have to take care of the smokers. The best part, wait, wait, and wait right now. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, my man. Accidentally, we fell into being categorized as a great sandwich spot. We had no intentions of that, but hey, when something's great, it's great, right? So we have our Tres Golpes sandwich which consists of fried cheese, which is very, very common cheese in, I would say, Hispanic households in the morning, you know, to go with your breakfast. Our platano maduro, which is our sweet plantain, and our pulled pork. And then you have some bark sauce drizzled on that. So it's like a really good contrast of flavors in there. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Then we have our chopped chicharron brisket sandwich. So we take some of our smoked chicharron and our smoked brisket, put it together, mash it up, put it in a ball, put it in some buns with some with a little drizzle of bark sauce. And it sounds very simple, but it's just a great marriage, to be honest with you. <laughs> They're so different, but dang, I like this one too. Either one, I mean, this is the best barbecue sandwich I've ever had, like, easily. It's not even close. Because not only does the cook take that long, but after you take them out, you gotta wrap them. So that even takes another couple of hours, so. Doesn't break, Bobby. <laughs> remember, remember that sazon era of barbecue, Bobby. <laughs> I never used the honey like Ruben does. The wrapping technique, it's, it takes the rib to another level. So this food's for the restaurant and also Smorgasbord? Yes, sir. Smorgasburg is one of the biggest food festivals in the nation. It's almost like a talent show. They go in there and they showcase their food. And if they accept you in, you're able to have a spot. So we're doing Saturdays in Williamsburg, 11 a.m. till we sell out. Right now, because of the restaurant, it's actually great because it falls in line with the regular production. You know, they gotta have their own checklist, make sure they have everything, because once you're at the festival and you forget something, that's it, it's a wrap, you know? The first time I met Ruben, I swear to you, Bobby, the only thing that I that I use to get to Ruben is the music. When I get there, it's like, dun, 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 
Welcome. And I, okay, okay, okay. Ah, pero lo allí. We don't have the reggaeton, papi. We don't work. seen the new vendors too also man everybody that's and their stories like how they started up it's it's really cool seeing them i believe that there's a culture gap in barbecue and it's because i'm in new york and obviously there's just so much diversity and it's just such a melting pot for culture and food there's just so many other flavors and proteins that can actually come into barbecue and be just as amazing as that brisket just as amazing as those pork ribs but we just need people to be more open to it and that way everybody there's a lot of creative people in the barbecue community man and there's a lot of barbecue concepts right now that are really flourishing and adding on to that so that's absolutely great and fantastic because that's what we want yeah hey, what's up jace good to see you man what's up oh great yeah i'm getting uh adding on <laughs> yeah that's right my one pack <laughs> Cheers. New York is a place where you can find a Michelin star hole in the wall. Hole, hole in the wall that's in the basement of a building. 10 minutes, you're in a very Hispanic dominant area. Another 10 minutes, you're in a very Jewish area, then Chinese area. It's just so much diversity, so much different foods. That's why we have the maruz, that's why we have the rice, you know, that's why we have the chicharron, which would be pork, but people, is there something for everybody to be like, oh, to familiarize with and be like, oh yeah, that, okay. Thank you. Just take this piece with me, <laughs> We have our sandwiches, our chicharron, chopped chicharron brisket sandwich, and then we have our meats, ribs, brisket. So it doesn't have the full menu. You know, it's kind of a little nudge. Hey, go to the restaurant if you want to try everything else, you know? So it's a little bit of advertising too, so, you know. The busiest day of the week is Sunday. Sundays are the busiest days of the week. We have extra weight when it comes to briskets, pulled pork, and chicharron. So our beef ribs are sold only on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday and beef ribs are just, I mean, come on now. Like, I never knew about a beef rib until I saw a Texas barbecue video. And out here in New York, it's tough to find beef ribs. So that was something that I had to offer. And it's only on the weekends because it takes a lot of space and it's a very costly item, you know? It's like another incentive to come on the weekends and dine in with us, so. And when service starts at 11, you know, we have a good amount of people that are already waiting for the doors to open. So, hey, you don't have to be at 11. You can be there at one, two, but after three, four, forget about it. It's non-stop. When you're giving that tray to that customer, you feel confident enough to be like, yo, I provided the most highest quality possible and I put my heart and soul in this. Those who think that barbecue is a fad or even bark barbecue won't last, we're still gonna be here. And we're gonna be here for a while. Yo, my man, baby.